El sol cayó, la luna se alza y con ella llegan los mejores sonidos del mundo. Tus sentidos se despiertan y tus oídos solo quieren, quieren rock. rock. Esto es Rockline.
mundial. Iniciamos eh, Rockline con una canción que para mí se convirtió en mi canción favorita de Ethereum gracias a la voz de, obviamente, Max Leven y de Lori Lewis. Lori Lewis, welcome to Rockline. Thank you. Pleasure to be here tonight. Hello, hello, oh, everybody. Para todos los que estén conectados, yo voy a estar hablando en español y después hago la traducción a, al inglés para hacer las preguntas a Lori. Listo. Uh, Lori, thank you very much to be here. Bueno, eh, And we're so happy to start this interview with you. I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Gracias. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Ok, estamos con Santiago eh, López de Dark Metal Divas, un gran amigo. Y bueno, sí, como él dijo, vamos a iniciar esta entrevista que es súper especial. Agradecemos también a la gente que está re, retransmitiendo este live, los, eh, de la página de fans de Ethereum que se llama Ethereum, los padres de, del, del metal sinfónico. Está por ahí también Dark Metal Divas, están por ahí eh, varias páginas retransmitiendo Symphony of the Night, Arte y Gótico. Bueno, esto lo va a ver Sudamérica y todos los fans de Lori uh, en, en este continente. Eh, ok, vamos a, a darle inicio, Santi, a la entrevista, preguntándole a Lori cuál fue el momento de su vida en que comienza a interesarle el metal sinfónico y cuál fue su experiencia en su primer banda, Asma Daeva. So, Lori, we're going to start here uh, with uh, asking you for how comes to interest in you the symphonic metal and how was your experience with Esma Diva? I think you, you got some something of this question from yeah. Hugo, but uh, I, I actually I translated it for you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so for me, it was kind of a, uh, to make the story really short, uh, how I ended up with Esma Deva was I said yes. So, the long story, Uh, is, is basically things in my life. I was working in, as a musician on the part-time and teaching a few voice lessons and piano lessons on the side uh, when I was living in Minnesota. And my full-time job that I had at the time, it went away and, and I thought, you know, now's an opportunity for me to get back to what really matters to me and that's music making. So I, uh, I, had, I had worked with some really inspirational musicians up to this point Uh, one of them being uh, somebody who lives in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, and is just a really talented musician, does a little bit of everything, um, singer, mostly, obviously. Her name is Maria Jetty, and I sang with her at a church later in my career, um, and she inspired me to just say yes. I realized if you really want to do music, you have to make those opportunities happen, even if maybe it's not always easy. Uh, it's just about saying yes, whether you get paid or not. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're making the music and you're making something uh, that expresses, you know, something important. And because of that, I ended up meeting Ace Medeva, I met John Prassus. Um, he was looking for somebody to, uh, to do a cover of um, an opera aria Doreste de Ayace, which is from uh, mm -hmm. Mozart. Yeah, Mozart. Uh, yeah, exactly. And so I, I, I thought, yeah, I can do this. And so I ended up uh, singing for them for a while and learned so much just about being flexible, being open and listening to different, uh, different viewpoints and, and uh, like letting the wide world of music inform you rather than just kind of, you know, coming at it like I had, which was mostly from a more academic more mm -hmm. instrumental, classical kind of vein. I was more into that than anything at that time. So it was really nice to open up that, that the gates and get an opportunity to do a lot of different things. Before I translate an abstract of your answer for the audience, uh, yeah. I want to ask you something. Esmeriva was the first thing that was not classical and operatic that you were involved to? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'd done a little bit of jazz, here and there, like back in my past, but it was all more in traditional jazz vein. So this was really the first thing where I went and did something significant departure. And also was doing the first time term time of recording like more in a, like a rock format instead of classical format. Okay, uh, I will make an, a little abstract of your answer for the Spanish audience. Okay. Eh, nos cuenta que eh, 
realmente es Madiva, que es su banda original, que es la banda de Estados Unidos, que ya conoció en Minnesota, es una de las, es, digamos, su primer acercamiento a algo que no sea eh, clásico u operático, sino que es su primer acercamiento a algo rock. Ella simplemente, cuando les cuenta su versión corta, le preguntaron si quería participar y ella dijo sí, eh, arriesgándose a explorar nuevos, nuevos, I know there is understanding me. Eh, arriesgándose a, a encontrar nuevos horizontes y nuevos caminos eh, y aceptando que la música justamente es eso, eh, es encontrar la música y ser un músico es, digamos, eh, poderse atrever a, a toda esta experiencia eh, completa de hacer distintas cosas. Eh, pero el primer acercamiento fue este, cuando le preguntaron que si podía interpretar Doreste da Yachi, que es un área de la ópera de Mozart y Domenio, eh, y el personaje Electra, la reina Electra, eh, entonces ella dijo que sí y ahí empezó todo un despliegue, desde ahí partió todo. Perfecto. Muchas gracias, Agna. Ok. Oh, es perfecto. Ok, eh, eh, le podemos preguntar, Santi, ¿cuáles fueron sus influencias? Si tenía antes de, de entrar a Esma de Eva en cuanto a metal sinfónico, bandas referentes o algo. Okay, have you uh, have you any influences before me, before symphonic metal before you un, un, or join uh, Esma Diva in the in the symphonic, symphonic metal world? Influence? Uh, well, not in not in a performer way. No, I was mostly just I was more interested in you know I liked metal. I've always liked metal. I was really into like you know. American metal, so a lot of hair bands and Soundgarden, I really liked them back in the day, just so many, but you know, American metal is very different, and so I hadn't really been exposed to what necessarily was going on overseas, except for a little bit here and there, like, um, but mostly like more like Queens of the Stone Age and bands like that, that's what I was listening to and really loving and enjoying and um, being inspired by. In the United States, there are just so many opportunities for so many different types of music. There, there are so many bands here. And there's so many kind of subsets of metal here. And um, I listened to also a lot of like, I went, I went dancing a lot. So I listened to a lot of like kind of that like industrial metal. And okay. so that was kind of more my influence and interest, I suppose, if you would say that. But I mean, the bands that I listened to when I was in high school would be like Guns N' Roses, <laughs> Soundgarden later, Nirvana, of course. I mean, they were oh, very rock. <laughs> yeah, I know. So they're like, you know, they're early. And then also I liked like a band. Um, I don't remember how I discovered them, but a group called Blue Cheer. They were <laughs> considered one of the first like metal bands, like kind of doomy type bands, I suppose. But it was just really them playing a lot of sad songs and <laughs> basically playing blues but with you know electric instruments using all sorts of weird sounds so i mean i've always been interested in music that sounds not like what's out there on the main stage that's for sure like i've always been more interested in what's going on in esoterica like i really liked bjork back in the time when not many people really knew a lot about her i was really interested in her and like the sugar cubes and all that kind of thing too so And uh, uh, for adding to that question, uh, okay, uh, performative or playing, okay, uh, it's, a, it's a thing, but did, did you have any inspiration or influence in your aesthetic? Because you joined Esmeriva and then in Therion, you have a, a, a special aesthetic, uh, your, your, uh, your outfits, your style. Uh, do you have any inspiration for them? Well, I, I, I guess maybe just, you know, like the gothic scene, I suppose. I kind of, I went dancing a lot when I, when I was living in Minnesota. And so I would go out dancing with my friends and we all dressed up in black and wore crazy wigs, like act all, you know, crazy. What's <laughs> the gothic spirit? <laughs> so much fun. It was, a, it was a time of freedom, time where you could just be anybody you want to be. It doesn't matter. No one cares. Just go be your, your true freak self and enjoy it and love it. And so, <laughs> This is style. It was important. It was. It was like this is my opportunity to just be myself and maybe be over the top because Therion, if they're anything, they are definitely over the top. They're all. <laughs> they take it to the next okay. level always. Like the music is very dramatic and emotional and intense and 
like all the musicians that are drawn to that band and have worked with that band, most of them are, you know, have pretty strong feelings and you can hear it in the music, so. Yeah, uh, and also in the lyrics, it, it allows you to be really theatrical uh, exactly. and, and obviously singing about gods and spirits and demons and whatever. Yeah, and all the, the, <laughs> okay. Hey, like, Santi, se va a hacer larga esa traducción. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I will make a little, uh, a really little uh, abstract of this and of this answer. Uh, okay, Lori no tuvo ninguna como influencia interpretativa a nivel de metal sinfónico eh, antes de entrar a Esmativa. De hecho, pues tienes más que todas sus influencias de metal clásico americano que sonaba en Estados Unidos. E igual en su infancia y en su adolescencia escuchaba, era más que todo rock americano tipo Guns N' Roses, pero no, no algo así como metal, eh, digamos que realmente estructurado. En cuanto a las estéticas, eh, Lori nos cuenta que ella en su adolescencia y en su juventud también bailó, eh, digamos que hacía danza y eso le permitía un poco su, su expresividad teatral, artística, que cuando llega el metal sinfónico, digamos, puede explotarla en una banda como Therion, que resulta siendo una banda súper dramática, una banda con letras poderosas que le permiten pues toda esa expresividad de la escena gótica en cuanto a sus vestidos, en cuanto al maquillaje, etc. Abstract. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Santi, Santi. Sí, lo hace bien. Eh, Santi, vamos a, a preguntarle entonces ahorita ya el momento en el que ingresa a Therion, es el 2007, ¿qué sintió al iniciar una gira con la banda ícono del metal sinfónico? con su alineación más recordada y querida a nivel mundial, ¿cómo fue, ¿cómo fue todo en este momento tan importante para la banda y pues para su carrera? Ok, so now we're going to ask you uh, for the moment when you uh, joined Therion in 2007, uh, how was that moment for you, for the band, what happened there? How you come to join Therion, uh, like they are considered the, the pioneers of symphonic metal in the world. So what happened? <laughs> uh, well, um, Christopher has, I would say the Christopher Johnson, of course, he's really, he is Therion. He's kind of the father of Therion. He is the reason Therion still exists to this day because he still continues to have passion to make music and, and uh, gather musicians together to do that. And because of that, like for me, how I know- Hunter of talents. <laughs> yeah, kind of, he is, and he, he's like, he, he's kind of, a, like, people call him the maestro for a reason, right? He kind of has a little bit of a way of seeing something and then, like, you know, encouraging it, as, essentially. So, um, what happened for me is I was with Ace and Deva, and um, he had reached out to John, my fellow bandmate in Ace and Deva, and said, hey, I need somebody to do a tour in 2008 and I've lost the person I was planning on bringing on the tour she's not able to do it is there any way uh do you think your singer would be able to do it he was thinking about Melissa Perlock from Visions of Atlantis and a few other groups as well yeah yeah so he was thinking of her and he's like do you think Melissa would do it and John was like well she's moved on she's no longer with uh Ace Medeva. I think she's doing something else but I have this singer now Um, I could ask her and he didn't ask me right away <laughs> because I think he was like, oh, a blessed she's going to go away. She's going to be gone. I'm never going to see her again. She's <laughs> just going to run away to, to Europe and I'll never see her. Right. So, so he kind of thought about it for not very long, a couple of weeks. And then we talked about it and I said, well, you know, you're right. I absolutely have to take the opportunity to work with them and, and see what happens. And We kept it pretty loose. I auditioned, I did a couple songs. Chris was like, okay, this is great. I'm going to have you do the tour. I see that you have touring experience because I'd done a lot of touring experience in uh, the classical vein. I'd done a lot of tours with choirs and different types of things like that. So I knew kind of what the day-to-day -day was to expect and what it would be like. So I think that was a big thing for him. Uh, so then I ended up uh, basically uh, going on the road with them for like, eight years, <laughs> essentially. A and couple of weeks turned in eight years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I, I joined the band as well, um, which was kind of a big deal because there aren't too many people who are considered members of the band, but I think part of it's because um, I feel like I can always contribute in a way that matters to the band when we're making recordings. And I think that yeah. that's part of the reason why I'm involved still, even though I'm not touring anymore with them necessarily so although I have to say I 
Christopher, when he's, when I said I was going to quit, he's like, she's going to miss it. And he's absolutely right. I absolutely miss it. I miss seeing the, the people and just meeting new people. It's, it was one of the best experiences of my life was just traveling. And I have to say, especially in Central and South America and even like Mexico and North America, just so much fun, so much fun. And the people I met were so passionate about the music and passionate about, you know, uh, just making music themselves. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's really inspiring. I think uh, we, uh, we uh, Latin American are passionate about almost everything. Uh, I agree. <laughs> um, okay, um, okay, I, I want to ask something, but, but I will translate it first, your answer. Um, todo empezó porque Christopher Johnson, eh, que conocemos como el gran maestro de Ethereum, eh, compositor y fundador de la banda, eh, pues siempre ha sido reconocido como un maestro, pero también como un cazatalentos, especie de cazatalentos que siempre está buscando cómo innovar en su banda. Eh, lo hemos visto de todos modos en Ethereum, que tiene una, un repertorio gigante de cantantes y artistas. Entonces, Ethereum, entonces eh, Christopher le pregunta a, al miembro de la banda de Desma Diva, eh, como, oye, ¿será que la chica de tu banda podría participar con nuestra, con nuestra banda para hacer unos coros? Porque la chica de que tenemos ahora no puede hacer unos coros para, el 2000, para las giras del 2008. Eh, eh, pero Christopher se estaba refiriendo a Melissa Ferlach, la, la vocalista inicial de, de Esma Diva. Y grabó el Gothic Cabana. Ajá. Okay. Y, y Melissa Ferlach, eh, de hecho, actual, eh, eh, última, hace poco grabaron otra vez juntos con Therion de Beloved Antichrist. Eh, okay. eh, pero bueno, entonces eh, el chico le dice, oh, oh no, eh, ahorita tenemos otra cantante, se llama Lori Lewis, eh, pero pues eh, mírala. Entonces hablaron, eh, Lori dijo, eh, pues esto solamente será un par de semanas, estas semanas se convirtieron en un par de años. Eh, estas pocas semanas de tour del 2008 se volvieron realmente ocho años en los que Lori fue parte del... De, 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 del grupo de Ethereum principal para sus giras, pero también se involucró en la banda como una miembro oficial grabando eh, las voces para los álbumes y actualmente sigue siendo una, una miembro de la banda, aunque ya no, haya, no haga giras con Ethereum, pues Lori sigue grabando con, con Ethereum. Eh, pues sí, básicamente eh, es eso, abstract. <risa> <risa> Astrak. Ok, bueno, vamos a recordar eh, esa tremenda gira que fue la del Gothic Cabala, en, que, que fue en un especial de, de aniversario de Ethereum, donde Lori definitivamente sale majestuosa. Y ya regresamos aquí en Rockline. Saludos a toda la gente que está aquí conectada, son bastantes y sigue subiendo. Qué bien. Así que, bueno, seguimos aquí en Rockline con Lori Luis. Ya regresamos. We're going to watch a video. Thank you very much. See you in a little minutes. Okay, I'll be here. Solo tocamos éxitos en Rockline.
Lori, Luis. Do you, do, you remember, do you remember? Do you remember that, Lori? <laughs> we want we want you to come back to the to the uh, scenario to, to to the concerts. Okay. Oh man, I miss it. It would be so much fun. I agree. Okay. Okay. Bueno, fue genial. Adiós, Corona, y hola, Lori. <laughs> okay, okay. Eso está muy bien. Okay, bueno. Yeah. It's eh. a spoiler. <laughs> spoiler to everyone. <laughs> okay. Bueno, eh, eh, Santi, continuamos, continuamos. Eh, no sé si tú tienes alguna pregunta ahí. Eh, pues sí, pero también me gustaría como contarte que... Um, sí. To tell Lori, we have a lot of audience and here, oh. and they are asking so much, so much questions. Oh yeah! Um, uh, I don't know if we can make a little uh, uh, short answers for that questions. Of course, of course. How was to record in French for Le Flou du Mal? <laughs> oh, fantastic! It was really cool. I I studied a lot of languages when I was in school in uh, colegio. Uh, Uh, but I, uh, it was nice to get a get a chance to actually learn a little more, and the music was so fun. It was really weird. <laughs> it was such a crazy concept, you know, so unusual. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it immensely, just trying something different. And for me, it uh, was I was able to be very involved in the produ production of that album. So I I helped to do a lot of the uh, like all of the harpsichords. That was pretty much me who did that so like it was really fun to do that it was it was great it was great to listen to all of the original tracks and try to lay it down and make it be Therion but also still honor the original song so it was fun but speaking uh, okay. in French a Francesa was super fun we had somebody who we worked with to uh to work on the language uh this her name is Audrey Dujada and she was great she really helped me a lot because you know even though I tried I tried to sound French. I know I still sounded American French, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> New Orleans French, maybe. <laughs> okay, a uh, uh, short translation. Um, le preguntamos a Luri cómo fue grabar en francés Le Flou du Mal, que es eh, el álbum de covers que sacó Therion en el 2013. Eh, 2013, si no estoy mal, 2012. Eh, entonces nos cuenta que pues para ella fue una muy natural, ella ha estudiado lenguas y también estuvo muy involucrada en la composición del álbum, eh, pues en la, el tema de adaptar las canciones que en originalmente eran francesas en, en su Terium, en su versión Terium. Um, uh, ok, uh, do you know something in Spanish? Uh, they ask. Do you know something in Spanish, Larry? <risa> sí. <risa> sí, hola. <risa> sí, hola. <risa> Yes, hello. <risa> ok. Mucho. <risa> ok, Santi, eh, le, queríamos, le quería preguntar eh, algo, alguna anécdota eh, que haya tenido durante las giras con, con Terion por Sudamérica, si recuerda, si recuerda algunas y en especial, pues, si, si tiene alguna con Colombia. Do you have uh, any remarkable experience that you remember in your tours for Latin, Latin America, South America, especially in Colombia, that it's oh. really nice to tell? Uh, just, I would say one of the things was just meeting fans that were really passionate in Colombia, like, especially Medellin. Uh, we had the same guy. His name is Eric. He goes by Eric David. I don't know what his last name really is, but... He was just so passionate about Therion and about music and about me. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought, okay, that's cool. That's cool. I'll, I'll be your friend. <laughs> and he was just so passionate about like just making an impression. And I think he really wanted us to have a good experience. And I have to say, like all of my experiences, especially in Colombia, were special. Like, uh, oh, I can think of one. We went to Bucaramanga on one tour and um i had hormigas colonas uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that was very unique did you eat bugs okay yes, i ate bugs okay that's nice <laughs> completely respect respectable, <laughs> respectable. <laughs> understandable understandable <laughs> okay Uh, ok, nos cuenta eh, Lori que 
de las cosas que ella más puede resaltar eh, de, de los encuentros aquí en Colombia son la pasión de los, de los fans, sobre todo cuando hay meet and greets, que es de estos momentos donde los fans se encuentran con la banda, sobre todo que hubo un caso en Medellín de un chico llamado David, eh, no recuerdo su apellido y no queremos exponer a David públicamente, pero que era muy, 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 muy apasionado. Eh, por la banda, por la música y por ella, y pues ella como wow <risa> ok, okay. Eh, y nos cuenta también como un poco de su experiencia en Bucaramanga cuando probó las hormigas culonas uh. eh, y yo la recrimino por haber comido insectos y ella lo, lo, lo responde con mucho orgullo eh, hormigas culonas con limón <risa> con limón <risa> ok los de lemon to hide that is a bar <risa> Con cerveza también. Just to hide that is a bug. You add lemon to hide that is a bug. Sí, sí. <risa> ok, eh, bueno, se viene una pregunta que es, eh, bueno, no, no podemos evitarla, eh, Santiago, y es lo que ocurrió en el 2014, eh, cuando ella pues estaba considerada ya como una de las mejores vocalistas del género a nivel mundial, y de un momento a otro decide no hacer más giras, se aparta de los medios... Y bueno, ¿qué la llevó a tomar esa decisión justo en ese momento donde ya estaba encumbrada entre las mejores vocalistas de este género? I think we all, could, uh, we all agree that it's an inevitable question, uh, Laurie. Uh, it is about what happened in 2014 and it is about your uh, go out of Therion. Uh, but, okay, no go out, but stop touring with Therion, stop traveling with Therion. And in a moment, I can't see my face anymore. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And in a moment when uh, your fans, the audience, the Ethereum fans consider you like the main singer of Ethereum, one of the most important and best singers that have been in Ethereum, me myself consider that. Uh, so, what happened? Me too. Uh, well, uh, right around that time, my life had started uh, kind of taking on different focuses. I uh, had met a wonderful human being and I ended up getting married to that person. So uh, that made a big difference for me. I realized that I needed to be home and really be home for a while and just get a chance to, to, to see what that means. And to me, I mean, the opportunity of making music and singing has been incredible. And it's, it's kind of almost like, in a way though, people who, choose to go on tour and do it you kind of put your life aside a little bit in order to make that happen like things like career goals or aspirations if they don't have to do with music it's very hard to move forward with that and I realized I thought you know maybe this is time for me to try to do something different and um and maybe take on a career and do something that's a little bit more locally based in the United States. And so there were a lot of practical decisions that kind of went into it. I know very boring, but no <laughs> drama at all because we all love each other very much in the band and I miss them immensely. And it was a very difficult choice, but it was at that time, I felt like it was the right choice. And um, who knows though, because now I've, you know, I'm, I'm a few years past that and I realize it's like, you know, even though I may have moved on and moved forward with other things in my life and, you know, put down roots, I still have the yearning to make music every day. I, I long to make music. I long to perform. I long to tour. All of those things are kind of part of who I am. And I guess I, needed to go away from it to realize that and sometimes that's what you need you need a little separation to realize what it is that really is your passion and drives you so short abstract translation um, eh, pues Lori nos cuenta que llega un momento en su vida en el que deci decide eh, digamos echar raíces porque encontrarse en una banda de una demanda mundial de una exigencia como Terion pues implica pues poner muchas cosas de tu vida a un lado eh, y fue una decisión muy difícil, eh, que incluso incurrió en decisiones que ella llama aburridas. Eh, pero, pero en ese momento, eh, pe, pues pensó que era la decisión correcta, y hoy, eh, seis años después, pues considera que sigue siendo una decisión correcta, a pesar de haberse alejado, pues, de los medios o de las giras de Terion, pues ella no ha perdido la voluntad de hacer música, y de hecho, pues sigue siendo una eh, miembro de Terion en, la, en los estudios. Eh, so, entonces, pues, no... no 
no es que haya dejado la música, se haya salido, ella sigue siendo miembro eh, activo de Ethereum, pero sí, digamos que llegó un momento, eh, <risa> eh, so, eh, llegó un momento en el que, en el que eh, pues decide simplemente tomar decisiones sobre su vida, cómo echar raíces, hacer algo incluso local en Estados Unidos, que es su tierra natal, eh, y pues digamos que, que es lo que la, la hizo feliz y la hace feliz en este momento. Eh, ok. Short, short fan questions. Which yeah. is your favorite song to play or to sing from Therion? Uh, Lemuria. 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 That's so beautiful. That's a beautiful yeah. song. In the ocean. <laughs> it's down. Yeah. Oh, so. uh, Qué bueno. poquito. <laughs> <laughs> You were saying that you have to sing it. In waves, wrapped in memory, you'll find... Oh, epic moment. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, Vamos. Spanish audience, uh, la canción que más disfruta cantar Lori de Therion es Lemuria. It was the first song I ever sang with Therion, actually. It was the one I recorded for the, for the, for the audition. Ah, ok, es la canción que, la primera canción de Therion que cantó, eh, fue, incluso fue la primera que grabó para la audición para, para Therion. Es y allí, y allí Christopher Corazón. Y Christopher was just blow. Like, Christopher dijo, ok. <risa> <risa> ok, bueno, vamos eh, a, a ese momento del 2014 en Chile. Eh, para los que querían, los que preguntaron que cómo canta Lori en francés, pues bueno, vamos a escucharla con una canción de las Flores del Mal en ese tremendo concierto que eh, fue en Chile 2014, creo que fue ahí. ¿Puedes decir Pupedison? Ya regresamos. Esa, eso. Ok. Exacto. <risa> Conectamos tus sentidos con lo mejor del rock. Oh 
<laughs> Spanish over there again. Uh, gracias. Ella sabe decir gracias. Gracias. <laughs> ok. Bueno, tenemos una invitada especial aquí, una cantante de una banda de, de metal sinfónico de la ciudad de Bogotá, quien quería estar en esta entrevista y hacerle unas preguntas a Lori. Así que démosle la bienvenida a Jen Axe de la banda Godiva de Bogotá, Colombia. Hola, so, Lori. Uh, we have a special guest here, a singer from a symphonic metal band from Bogotá, Colombia. Um, the symphonic metal band is called Godiva, and she is Jen. So, mm -hmm. is Jen here? Okay, Jen is connected. <laughs> and she is a real fan of you, and this is an opportunity for her to ask you some questions. Cool. Jen, where are you? Okay. Here she is! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> I think she's connecting. I, connecting. I don't hear you. <laughs> oh, something happened. Let's see. Oh. Bueno, Jen. Eh, oh. Estamos esperando el audio. ¿Nos escuchas, Jen? Jen. It says she's connecting to audio. I sí, think está, está conectando el audio. Un poco difícil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ¿escuchas ahí? Hola. Hola. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Perdón la demora, es que está eh, problemas logísticos. <laughs> okay, hola, ¿cómo estás, Jen? ¿Cómo estás, Hugo? <laughs> bien, bien, súper. Pues aquí, encantado, ya tenemos dos, dos bellas damas aquí, y bueno, encantado de estar con Lori, y, y bueno, pre tu pregunta. Bueno. Hola Lori, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Bien, admiradora tuya, de tu grandiosa voz, espectacular. Bueno, eh, mi pregunta es, eh, ¿cuánto tiempo le tomó la técnica a ella, desarrollar esta técnica lírica? How long did it take to develop your uh, lyrical uh, training in your voice? Oh, ah... Uh... Well, I studied, I guess, about seven years officially. Like, that's when I was in school, uh, I studied. But I also studied a little bit in high school, so nine years. And then I, after I got out of, you know, college and was touring, and it was right after, actually, the second video that you showed where I'm wearing the red dress. During that tour, I had such a difficult time singing. It was muy difícil para cantar porque mi, uh, I was wearing the, the, the corset. Dress the corset. Yes. So I was like, oh, corset. no. La preta <laughs> al cantar. No, la beta. Difícil. Right? But struggling you. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know, I need to maybe rethink about like how to sing. And uh, so I studied with a teacher. Uh, this guy from uh, Minneapolis who's wonderful. And we talked a lot about breathing and for me it felt a little bit like why are we going back to the very beginning but it was important because I learned about how to breathe freely and then to sing with power and those things are so important I think to becoming whatever kind of singer you are and uh, whether it's lyrical or coloratura or dramatic or whatever you are. No sé si tú quieras complementar ahí, Santi, que tenías por ahí también otra pregunta. Yeah. Santi, do you think you can translate that? Ok, yeah, a uh, little trans abstract trans translation. Eh, pero Lori nos cuenta que le tomó entre siete y nueve años, siete cuando estuvo pues en la universidad eh, estudiando eh, pues la técnica, nueve, eh, dos, tres, un par de años en los que estudió eh, en su high school, en la secundaria. Y también, pues, nos cuenta que de todos modos es un aprendizaje constante. Nos cuenta que justamente el video que, que, que mostramos donde estaba interpretando... Eh, ¿Qué decir? Son of the Sun, ajá, tenía, tenía un corset que justamente la, la, le apretaba mucho para cantar y fue muy difícil. Entonces, que de todos modos, justo también en esa época, eh, tomó clases con un profesor en Minneapolis. The teacher was fresh from Minneapolis. Ok, from Minneapolis. <laughs> George from Annapolis, mm -hmm. and 
eh, y pues que él le enseñó mucho sobre todo el tema de la respiración, que para ella fue un poco extraño como volver a los inicios, volver a aprender todo el tema de la respiración, pero que es un gran maestro que digamos también le permitió aprender mucho más sobre, sobre, su, sobre su canto. And I, I would like to add something to a, a question about your voice, uh, specifically from Carmina Romanus. Uh, in Carmina Romanus, you explore a lot of your voice because I, I was amazed yes. because uh, there, there is a different style from what we are usually used to hear from you uh, with a, a lower notes, a style that, that is more, uh, I, I, won't, I wouldn't say dramatic, but uh, like warm. Your, your singing feels more warm and, and uh, lower voice with, with a lower notes. Uh, not the typical, typically, typically uh, operatic style that right. we're used to hear from you. What can you say about that? Uh, well, I think that that has to do with just the composition of that album. I mean, the, the uh, artists who wrote that album originally is a band from Russia. And uh, the singer that they had, uh, she definitely had a lot to do with how they recorded it. She's more of a mezzo, um, but she had, you know, she has kind of like very significant range. She can sing soprano, she can sing alto, she can sing mezzo, she can do it all. And so that was part of the reason why I was excited about uh, recording the album, Carmina Romanos, is because I felt like it would be a chance for me to be able to explore other sounds that I hadn't really done since I was with uh, Therion, but maybe more like in the vein of Ace Medeva, actually. <laughs> in some ways, because that was definitely more exploring lower ranges and using more like uh, belting, that concept of belt. I don't know if you, you know that Santi, are you familiar with belting? That concept? Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, yeah. the different yeah, more, more techniques, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I felt like that was uh, a big part of, um, a big part of like an opportunity for me to, to show more, to show more of my voice and do something that again is all about saying yes. <laughs> it's about Just putting yes. the envelope. It's putting yourself outside of your comfort zone and doing something that maybe isn't the easiest thing to do, but it's worth it to try, always. Okay. Uh, so, was it was it challenging? Say again. Was it challenging? Was it changing? Challenging. Oh, challenging. Uh, yes and no. I really, we ended up recording it a couple times. I recorded it once and we realized that the recording, I had sung too far from the mic and the sound was not good. It actually sounded very hollow and kind of disconnected. And so I ended up re-recording it in another studio uh, with another type of mic system and set up and it was much closer in and more intimate and got more of my voice, like more of my actual voice. and this is very technical but basically it ended up being a much better album because of that because we kind of took a step back and I said eh and I'm not sure if I'm really excited about how it sounds and Christopher was like yeah you're right I think we need to re-record some of this and so we ended up doing that and I'm glad we did because I had also been sitting with the music then for a few months and I don't no, if you're, are you a singer, Santi, or any, I know that you are a singer. <laughs> yeah. Are you a singer as well? No, but, but I'm, I'm related to music. I, was a, musician, a, yeah, I, I was a violin player for a couple yeah. of years. Yeah, so the more time that you spend with your music, with the song, and with the instrument, and figuring it out, the more it becomes part of you. So that's, that's basically what happened. It became much more like uh, an expression of myself rather than just some really cool songs that I'd heard. Uh, that's nice. Uh, before I translate this, I want to ask this, um, any opportunity of touring with your solo album? Uh, not right now. Okay, uh, right now because of the corona. no. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say corona, COVID-19? COVID-19. COVID-19. COVID-19, gracias. <laughs> Dice no. <laughs> a ver, who knows? I mean, we'll see. It would be really cool if I could. I know that Therion has also explored doing uh, more simple record, like performances with just like acoustic instruments and stuff. I think something like that could work. But honestly, I don't know because the 
the musicians who played on that album are so <laughs> like they are talented and that the the um the keyboardist the pianist i mean that guy plays like a freaking beast he's so talented so i don't know i don't know if we could really do that or not and, I don't know, and maybe, maybe we have something yeah. that only deserves to be listened to in recording i i would it's, it's sad to say so but sometimes that's the case or maybe a gig uh, just in, in united states or yeah. maybe a gig in russia <laughs> or maybe you can they are. <laughs> okay uh, I will make an, an, an abstract translation le preguntamos Gen X le preguntó a, a Lori so, ah bueno no eso ya lo, lo habíamos traducido estábamos hablando de cantos romanos y el estilo que, que usó en su álbum porque en este álbum pues vemos que explora un poco más técnicas de, de voz mucho más eh, bajas con notas mucho más graves a diferencia de lo, del estilo operático que siempre hemos estado acostumbrados a oír de, de su parte nos cuenta que sí efectivamente eh, pues las composiciones que eran originalmente rusas pues eh, digamos que le permitían eh, explorar mucho más de su voz pero también fue eh, un, un desafío y un deseo para ella decir, bueno, quiero mostrar más de lo que yo puedo hacer porque eh, nos cuenta y también nos explica que ser músico es familiarizarte más con tu instrumento y cada vez que estás más cercano a tu instrumento, pues se convierte más en una expresión de ti. Entonces, ese álbum está también mucho más cercano a la, a la, a la expresión de voz que quiere generar Lori. Y le pregunté por, por si había alguna oportunidad de gira con el álbum Car eh, Car Carmina Romanus pero nos dice que no sabe, obviamente estamos con la situación del coronavirus, eh, pero también que los, los miembros de la banda que tocan en, en ese álbum pues son músicos, expertos, que también tienen sus bandas, tienen sus ocupaciones, son realmente talentosos, eh, algunos están en Rusia, otros en Europa, o sea, en, en muchos países, entonces, eh, que no lo sabe, pero pues ella dice, eh, nos ha dicho toda la entrevista, say yes, uh, maybe uh, Corona says no, but... <risa> Spoiler, Santi. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> ok. Ok. Eh, Santi, vamos entonces a, a ahorita pues a, a centrarnos en lo que es Carmina Romanus. Y yo le quería preguntar a, a Lori, ¿cómo ha sido eh, la recepción de este álbum? Pues como bien sabemos, ella regresó a participar en la ópera de Ethereum Beloved Antichrist. Y, y bueno, todos los fans se emocionaron y todo el cuento. Y ahorita en el 2020 lanza su primer trabajo en solitario, Carmina Romanus. ¿Cómo ha sentido la recepción del público de este álbum eh, ahorita, pues, en este momento? Uh, we want to know how, uh, how you feel about the reception of the audience and your fans about this album, uh, Carmina Romanus. And uh, because uh, we haven't heard from, for, from you for a little few years, And then uh, it comes uh, with um, Beloved Antichrist, uh, uh, the, the, the opera metal. And, and I, I also want to know your experience about that. But um, how, how you feel your fans, your, your audience, your reception um, with these two records, especially uh, Carmina Romanus? Okay. Um, well, let's, let's go back to... Antichrist, because that's probably the one I do want to talk a little bit about that. I didn't, uh, I didn't do a ton with that, that recording. I really feel like in many ways that was Christopher's baby. Like he's, he'd been wanting to write an opera for a very long time. And I think that he felt like this was the perfect opportunity for him to do so. And to do something that's just like really going to push him and stretch him uh, to try to do something that is, uh, you know, in the classical vein, right? So he's trying to basically put himself into that and find a way to do that. Because we, we played with that idea. We had done uh, like the Mischkolz experience uh, in Hungary. We went to Hungary and did the classical, uh, uh, that classical uh, festival that they do there where it was like they had Epica and they had Therion. They had a few other bands that came and performed with uh, in that city as part of their festival. I think they were trying to open up the concept of what classical music can be and kind of play around with that. So like Therion did recordings of um, Wagner and <laughs> then we did some of the Therion, like we did like uh, Via Nocturna and some really cool, cool arrangements with this uh, really talented uh, German conductor, his name was Markus Stollenberg. He was kind of the, one of the people behind it in many ways in terms of just like making that happen. So 
uh, a really cool, cool experience. And I think that for Christopher, like he realized it's like, oh, this is an opportunity to also make uh, music in a classical vein. Uh, and so then he ended up, yes, yeah, there it is. And I, I didn't, I wasn't that involved though with it. So I, I did a little bit, a little bit here and there, but at this point, you know, he's already kind of moved on and he's using other voices as well in his arsenal. So like Kiara, like she's such a beautiful voice. Oh my God. Like seriously, I would love to see her live. I like see her perform. I think it's really cool that you guys get to see her now. Like when she she's comes. amazing. Oh, she's amazing. God. And her oh. band, for all who, who doesn't know it, uh, her band, Chrysalis, mm -hmm. it's, it's an amazing band too. Yeah, I've listened to the music. It's just wonderful. So, so I think that, I guess, what I've realized when he did that recording or we did that, you know, that whole entire thing, I don't know if that's ever something that's going to be really toured a lot, <laughs> you know, because it's such a large undertaking to do an opera. Uh, and to do a classical vein type of thing like that. But he has the depth of artistry behind him. He has so many talented musicians and it's, it's really exciting to see all of the different types of musicians that are there uh, and available. And it's really cool. It's really cool to see that happen. I, I think that uh, I'm really glad I was even, even if it was a small little piece of it, I'm glad I was able to be a part of that. So for Carmina Romanos, I felt like it was kind of an opportunity. Uh, Christopher had reached out to me. He said, hey, I, this, I met this guy. Uh, actually, I met the singer from the band and uh, she gave me this album and I'm blown away by it. Um, what do you think about it? And I listened to it and I was like, wow, this is pretty good. Like the music is really, really good. And he said that they just hadn't gotten a lot of uh, reception from uh, from labels at that time in Russia okay. and in so yeah in Russia and uh, so it, it really just hadn't gone anywhere but it's really good it's like a really good album so I was like yeah why don't we do it we'll make an album we'll we'll write the lyrics and you know maybe like come up with a concept and Christopher's like what do you think about doing a, an album about the planets and I said yes absolutely <laughs> that's a great idea the planets and the gods yeah. I think it's, it's like, gods, I like it's like <laughs> perfect combination a clash of titans <laughs> yes, yes absolutely and like literally like we sing about the origin of the titans and like neptune and uranus and all of these different gods and how it all came to be and it's, it's really like it all comes down to just for me it's, mm -hmm. it's a way to describe the human condition it's a way to describe uh what's going on in our lives today and and um tell a story that has been happening for many, many, many years, for eons. So it's, it's really exciting. It's, it's exciting to be able to do something that hopefully will help that band in Russia, like get a little bit more, like maybe people will listen to them. Maybe people will be curious about these guys and want to know a little bit more about them. Okay, um, I will make an astra abstract. Sorry, that was a long one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <risa> eh, bueno, nos cuenta un poco sobre su experiencia con Beloved Antichrist, eh, la ópera que compuso eh, Christopher Johnson, eh, que digamos había sido su sueño de toda la vida crear una ópera, una rock ópera, donde tuvo muchísimos invitados, entre esos a Melissa Ferlach, a eh, Lori Lewis, la, eh, Linia Bigstrom, eh, Chiara Malvestiti, Thomas Bigstrom, bueno, una serie de cantantes así. Más, 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 más. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> more, uh, que interpretan a distintos por aquí, por, por aquí han estado casi todos <laughs> por aquí han estado, no. estado casi todos Kiara, Snowy, Thomas <laughs> Rosalía <Yeah. laughs> Rosalía Zairem ah, aunque Rosalía no sé si estuvo en Beloved un álbum donde pues cuentan una historia de, de, de una guerra pues entre Dios y el diablo y el anticristo y el Vaticano. Sí. Una, uh, uh, like a, a really chaotic um, uh, history. Una película. Sorry, yeah. Uh, I have, re I have a, a really experience with this album. I buy it in Spain and in a flight that lasts like uh, 12 hours, I listen it completely uh, in one, in one go. 
And it was like an immersive experience. I was, I was feeling like I was watching a movie or um, a Broadway production. I was just reading the, the script and imagining the, the scenarios and the characters and the costumes. It was really amazing. Uh, way to do it. Ok, eh, entonces, eh, pues que es una experiencia demasiado pues, brutal, a pesar de que, de que Lori haya estado solamente en un par de pidas, como, eh, eh, I, I can't remember your character was, it, it was Elena? Uh, Elena. She was the sister. La... Elena's sister. La de, 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 oh, oh my God. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Yeah, I remember. For my sister, uh, see the song um, uh, "Through Dust to Rain." <laughs> Through Dust to Rain. Yeah. Okay. Uh, entonces, pues que fue una experiencia maravillosa, pero pues hacer una gira con con un álbum como este, pues es muy difícil, pues por todo lo que con pues conlleva hacer una mega producción de ópera con escenarios, vestuarios, miles de personajes, miles de cantantes. Pero, pero pues digamos que se sintió eh, eh, acompañar, se sintió muy bien acompañar a Christopher Johnson en este sueño que es como su bebé. Y ya por otro lado, Carmina Romanus, eh, pues como sabemos es de una banda originalmente rusa. Y, y pues que las canciones son originalmente en Rusia y que habían tenido una, una recepción como, como moderada a, a alta allá en Rusia, pero cuando ya lo escuchó con Christopher y estuvieron como conversando sobre hacer un álbum al respecto, pues fue como, wow, eh, sí, hagámoslo, la música es buena, es excelente, entonces, ¿qué tal si eh, hacemos un concepto? Entonces, a pensar en los planetas y en los dioses, y entonces Neptuno y Luna y Venus y Marte. Y, eh, ¡Ah, Luna! Christian Iman is a god. <laughs> and, and your your collaboration with Thomas Bigstrom in uh, in Mercury Mercury Mercury, Mercury. Uh, oh, it's God. amazing no. the album is amazing uh, mm -hmm. Mars is my favorite song like I was like I was like one week yes. with with the with the with the melody uh, total war na, na, na. Mars. Y es, y es precisamente, eh, ahorita vamos a ir ya mismo a escuchar el álbum, el nuevo álbum de Lori Luis con esta canción Marte que a mí también me encanta, además que es el planeta que me rige y todo el cuento. <ríe> es el, el Before planeta. that, a, a few, few, few uh, fan questions here okay. in the chat. Uh, quick questions. Which is okay. your favorite opera? Oh. Mm. Well, I, I have to say... <laughs> You're gonna laugh at me. You can say Idomenio, please. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why. Because it is basically like a, an allegory for what is right and what is wrong. And it's a bit of a ton in, tongue in cheek. Like he wrote it kind of like making fun of people at the time saying like, you're doing this, but you really shouldn't be. You know, it's, he was making like a political statement without being political. Like he was finding a way to say, hey, what you're doing is kind of shitty. It's so wrong. <laughs> it's <laughs> exactly. kind of shitty. Exactly. And so it was, it was really, I, I, I love, you know, when artists make a statement without being like overt, when they make a statement and they're like, hey, you know, maybe this is important. Maybe you're not the, you know, the, the, the paradigm of only one way of thinking is not necessarily the right way. Like hidden, hidden statesmen. And uh, another fun question. Um, uh, do you have any metal favorite bands? Mm, metal favorite bands? I like Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, I like The Darkness. <laughs> well, they're not really metal, but they're just so great. They're so much fun to listen to. It's like party metal. Um, who else do I really like? Uh, Uh, there's so many good metal bands right now. There's so much going on, like all around the world, and I feel like there's opportunity to to see a lot of different types of music right now. Here, I live in Portland, Oregon, or near Portland, Oregon, and we see more kind of indie type acts that come through here. So, um, yeah, I like Leprous. I, I toured with them back in 2008. I don't know if you guys know who they are. They're, a, some, they're like a progressive metal band. I love Opeth, of course. I saw them several times and super talented musicians. Um, I like that they uh, changed it up and they did something different. Uh, 
back when they released their heritage album and you know put, took a different path i like porcupine tree <laughs> like there are a lot of really I, I guess for me i'm more interested again like in esoterica or in bands that are kind of pushing the envelope in terms of uh the style of music and what they're doing and they're not really necessarily trying to just be metal i guess that's kind of it so i listen to a lot of different types of music so you have the spirit like a, a witch yes <laughs> <laughs> exactly you got it <laughs> yeah, me, too. me too don't worry about it i i i, I i'm <laughs> <on this too. laughs> okay <In Spanish. laughs> bruja bruja <laughs> Bueno, brujas. Eh, brujas. <ríe> okay. ok, vámonos entonces a escuchar eh, Marte, el dios de la guerra en el álbum de en Solitario de Lori Luis. Y ya regresamos. Gina, no te vayas. Yo sé que estás guardando la pregunta ahí. No te vayas, Gina. We're approaching to the end of no, the acá estoy. We're going to listen Mars. From um, Carmina Romanos. And we're back in a few moments too. Just Hello. listen Mars from Lori Luis and Carmina Romanos. Conectamos tus sentidos con lo mejor del rock.
<laughs> Lori, we want to see you. Earworm. We want to see you sing, sing this song. You on the stage. De Espanol. <laughs> what? Have you ever heard the term earworm? Uh, earworm, uh, gusano yeah. de oreja. <laughs> so in English, what it means is it's a song that you can't get out of your head. It's like in your head and it won't go away. Okay. And it's like, ah, it's in my head. Yeah, that's that's what it is for you, right, Santi? Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it was really, really exciting and also uh, weird. But it, it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a different sound I used in that, for sure. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, before continue, uh, a fun question uh, that is a singer too. He wants to know, uh, he says, uh, listen to that, uh, singer question. Uh, how many octaves do you manage and which are your limits? Uh, meaning the lowest notes and the highest one. Uh, well, I, I won't. I won't be uh, snarky because I was going to like all of the octaves, but no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cholera too, rap, please. If, if, I I have a, if I have a cold, I can sing really low. I can sing down to the oh, yeah. low uh, middle C. <laughs> like that's if I'm sick. If I have a cold. <laughs> Y si your voice is uh, soprano coloratura, uh, soprano ligera. Honestly, it's hard to say. I have to say, I, I studied, you know, when I was in school, I studied and they said I was like lyric coloratura. And the pose. Wow. But in terms of how I sing now, I, I feel like I've gone a different path. Uh, okay. Different path. Speaking of which, yeah. coloratura notes, coloratura, have you ever played, I don't know, the doll song or Glitter and Be Gay or, yep. I don't know, yes. Dirk Rat? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've studied all of those and I, I can actually, it's funny because like, I, you know, we have our studio here at home and I sing through them every once in a while and I can sing all the notes. I can do it all. So it's like, ah, okay, maybe I was a coloratura. Maybe I can do that. <laughs> mm, that like, oh my maybe. God, I want to hear you sing Glitter and Be Gay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy, it is a dream. I, I performed it uh, as a chorus member back in the 90s, and it was so much fun. It was so much fun. And you can, and, and you can in that play, you can play um, uh, the mother, even the mother, easily anticipated, easily, yeah. easily assimilated, and, yeah, yeah. And, and the girl, it's, it's real amazing. Yeah, when we record, when we performed it, we performed with, uh, I don't know if you know who she is, her name is Harolyn Blackwell. Uh, she's an African-American uh, singer. Uh, she's mm -hmm. a coloratura soprano, and she was one of the first ones to record it. I think she recorded it for a Broadway recording uh, mm -hmm. back in, I don't know, 1970s, I think it was, and it is so phenomenal. She's so talented, and like watching her okay. sing Glitter and Be Gay was unforgettable. Uh, that area is amazing. Uh, I was obsessed with, that, with it uh, like uh, uh, two months ago. Yeah, um, because I, I I've never watched the the Christian Shenabat performance before, and uh, I just watched it and it was like, oh my god, this I is know. really cool. Kristen Shenabat is really cool. Yeah, she's amazing. Oh. She's one of my favorite singer ever in life, and mm -hmm. she's so freaky, ta freaky talented. Oh my god, yeah, she she's it's really stupid. good. It's too beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Santi. La buscamos a la gente que está ahí. Ay, verdad. I was forget for uh, I was uh, forgetting about the, the translation. And I was like, okay. okay, por favor. <laughs> That's the translation for everyone. Eh, Las personas. Un fan le hizo la pregunta a Lori, un fan que es cantante de cuántas octavas alcanzaba y cuál era su su nota más baja y su nota más alta. Y entonces ahí empezó la conversación, ella dijo, no voy a hacer una presumida, decir que alcanzó todas las octavas, pero prácticamente sí. Eh, pues Por favor. Sí. En un registro bastante amplio de, de, de su rango bajo, medio y alto, que incluso puede llegar a, a notas de coloratura. Entonces estuvimos conversando un poco de algunas áreas de ópera de, que son para soprano de coloratura, como Der Holrache, Brilliant and, and Be Gay, uh, mencioné otra, ah, eh, The Dolson, la canción de la muñeca, 
Entonces estuve, estábamos hablando como de que si ella era capaz como de interpretar estas canciones, nos decía que sí, que eh, digamos que ella, eh, ella se considera a sí misma o puedes acercarse a lo que es una soprano de coloratura. Pero la que, pregunta de Jenna, ¿no? De Jenna. Ajá, que fue la pregunta que le hizo Jen, que digamos, ¿cuál era la clasificación en la que entraba? Si era soprano lírica de voz, sí. o de coloratura. Porque eh, es un registro demasiado amplio. Eh, para mí, o sea, yo por eso pregunté, eh, eh, pensé que eh, Your Voice es un lírico, soprano lírico o un dramático que tiene bastante cuerpo en la voz. Eh, me sorprende que sea una coloratura. <risa> Alcanza sí, que como impactado porque ah, pues, realmente las voces coloraturas son muy agudas y muy... Exacto, pero y tiene están... mucho peso en el registro bajo. O sea, ahorita que pusieron el, el, el trabajo de ella, me gustó mucho eh, su voz en la parte baja. Nos claro, ahí explora, ahí explora esa parte Exacto. De lo que antes con Terion. Exacto, Exacto. Terion es eh, agudos, súper agudos, entonces tenía esa inquietud, pero espectacular, me parece muy bueno el registro. Entonces, bueno, eso fue más que toda esa conversación, como aquí tirándonos un poco, pues nos contó que ella había interpretado Glitter and Be Gay eh, en coros y que también era capaz de interpretar el área más aguda de esa obra, de esa opereta, que es, que es de Bernstein, es una opereta estadounidense, eh, que es Glitter and Be Gay, que es el área como más muy, muy aguda. Muy aguda. <risa> Demasiado aguda. Ok. Eh, bueno, eh, Santi, yo creo que ya vamos finalizando, no sin antes preguntarle. Ah, bueno, creo que Jen tenía otra pregunta por ahí, ¿no? Una que tenía que ver yes, con las... Juan. Eh, ok. Eh, Juan, nosotros, eh, que, digamos que al ser una mujer en el metal, ella como, mmm, como cantante lírica, ¿cómo le ha ido a nivel mundial en la, en la escena del metal? Como cantante como canta, lírica. O sea, como cantante lírica. Cantante lírica femenina. ¿Cómo, siente que, ¿cómo, siente que está, eh, ¿Cómo se siente en la escena mundial del, del ¿Cómo rock? se ha sentido? Sí, ¿Cómo oh, le ha ido en okay. las giras y todo esto? Ok, okay. Eh, Lori, we are approaching to the end of the interview. Jen wants, uh, wants to ask you something. And it's really interesting because it's a question that we usually do to uh, female metal singers. Uh, because it's, in, it's really important for us. Uh, I, I am a part of a uh, staff of a media um, that is called Dark Metal Divas and we promote the work of women in metal. So the, the question that Jen has to you is, uh, being a classical trained singer, uh, a, a lyrical singer, how, how have you feel in, in the metal scene, uh, being female, of course, in the metal scene worldwide, being a classical singer, but in also a metal singer, how, how is this? Well, uh... Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> yeah, it is, I know. Yes. A deep question, a really deep question. <laughs> yes, important. I think, I think that, uh, I would say that I feel that um, many times uh, as being in, in uh, being a, a female singer in the metal genre, um, I would say that uh, it's really hard to say. I would say that part of it is that I feel like for me, the most important thing is the collaboration element. Uh, I don't really feel like I necessarily want to be like a star. That's not something that was ever really my passion or my interest. And that's why I am who I am now and where I am, what I'm doing right now. So. I never really felt like that was kind of what I wanted. Uh, if you want that, if that's something that drives a person, then you need to go for it. I think that there's room in the world of classical and metal and where all of these things intersect, where you can have an opportunity. If you have the talent, if you have the passion, if you have the ability, I think it's a really good time to be taking your own chances and put, putting yourself out there. And I don't think that uh, the fear of uh, necessarily like people telling you, ah, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. You, you can't listen to that. You can't listen to the naysayers. You can, you can only follow what you're feeling in, your, in yourself and in your soul and in your heart and, you know, move forward in that way. I, I know that's kind of a weird way to say it, but I, I feel like it's, it's all about timing. It's all about passion. It's all about authenticity. 
It's about, you know, making music that means something uh, to you as well. Like as a musician, I think it's so important that we make music that means something and that means something to us either on a personal level or maybe to, to others. And I know there were times when I was making music with Therion that I didn't necessarily connect immediately with what we were doing until I realized that it's not necessarily about what you're saying. It's about the connection with others. It's about making music that inspires others to make music. That's really what it's about to me as a musician. <laughs> like that's, that's what I really want to see. I want to see others like go and, you know, do something and, and express their passion in a way, even if everyone says no, just do what it is that your heart tells you to do. Okay, I, I, I'm going to translate it uh, back forwards and I, I will start with the ending. Um, Lori nos está contando un poco su experiencia siendo cantante lírica, pero también cantante de metal, pero nos invita a una reflexión sobre realmente hacer lo que amamos. Eh, y si eres cantante, pues aún más. Eh, nos cuenta que, por ejemplo, lo que es más importante para ella es poder conectarse tanto con la música eh, ella misma también pero, pero también conectarse con el otro con la audiencia con el público al principio nos cuenta que eh, probablemente no se sentía conectada con las letras de Terion pero quizá no era no eso no era lo más importante era estar conectada con las personas y con lo que las personas eh, escuchaban eh, al respecto de la escena nos dice que algo muy importante de la escena del metal que digamos que ya considera es el tema de, de estar siempre pues apasionado sí pero colaborando eh, sin una necesidad como imperante de ser una estrella y, y digamos que ella lo deja muy claro al principio de su intervención que nunca ha sido como su interés ser una estrella, sino eh, conectar, conectar con personas y creo que eso radica en esa importancia de la competitividad que se podría ver en, en, otras escen en otros escenarios pues nos dice que tanto en, la, en el metal como en la música clásica eh, hay, hay espacio, eh, hay room, hay room for everyone, hay hay un espacio para todos, o sea, todos caben, todos caben, todos tienen la oportunidad, incluso si hay algunos que dicen que no, que te digan que no, que no puedes hacerlo, pues ella realmente nos está invitando a que escuchemos a nuestro corazón eh, y que siempre seamos genuinos y auténticos con nosotros mismos, ¿no? Que, que si eso es lo que nos llama, lo que nos llama nuestra vocación, pues, eh, pues vamos para allá y no escuchemos a esos tantos que te dicen no, 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 pues no, eh, detengamos a esa gente que te dice que no. Eh, y a todos los prejuicios que pueden haber alrededor, como una mujer no puede hacer metal o una cantante de ópera no puede hacer metal, pues eh, we have to stop them. Es un tabú. Uh, Ay, a ver. por todo. For everyone, every single person. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to okay. do a question, a little question uh, about <laughs> what's, coming, what's coming for Therion. I know that is Leviathan. Yes. What is yes, happening? What is happening to Leviathan? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's swimming in the ocean. <laughs> swimming in the ocean and, and, and drawing uh, ships. <laughs> oh no! We're still working on it. It's it's definitely in post production at this point. Uh, everything has been recorded. I definitely was involved in this production. It was a lot of fun. It was a really cool album. Um, We'll see. We'll see what you guys think. I'm really excited to have something that we're getting ready to put out there. And who knows? Maybe, maybe if all of the universe aligns and Therion goes on tour again ever, hopefully I'll be involved somehow. I don't know how that'll look or what that'll look like, but I would love to, honestly, I would love to like work with them again on the road, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Ok, I will, I will make a, a translation. Um, Lorino estaba contando un poco sobre lo que viene para Therion, que es Leviathan, el nuevo álbum de Therion. Nos cuenta que pues, va en viento en popa, nadando como el Leviathan y hundiendo un par de barcos. <risa> <risa> eh, pero que ya está en etapa de postproducción y que pues, es muy emocionante. Vamos a esperar, pues lo esperamos con muchas ansias para ver qué viene. Olvidé eh, traducir una, una de las respuestas y creo que en el, en el chat lo están me lo están recriminando y es cuando le preguntamos a Lori sobre algunas bandas de metal que le gustaban. Entonces, ah, no, no, habló de que le gustaban algunas bandas como Queen Lose, of the Stone o, Age. Ajá, Queen of the Stone Age o Opeth. Pero también, o sea, nos cuenta que eh, no necesariamente bandas que hagan metal puro, sino ese tipo de bandas que pueden explorar sus géneros y ser un poco más progresivos o folk, o bueno, eh, sí. en distintos, digamos, en distintos 
eh, ámbitos. Y había olvidado traducir esa y creo que hay alguien en el chat escribió como, Santiago, no traduciste lo de las bandas de metal. Y yo, okay. <risa> bueno, la eh, los fans, agradeciéndole a todos los fans que estuvieron en esta entrevista, agradeciéndole a Lori. Lori, para mí, es una... Es una cantante de inspiración, es una cantante referente a nivel mundial. Es mi cantante favorita de Ethereum todo, por todos los tiempos. <ríe> eh, y, y fue un honor y un placer tenerte aquí. Y eso último que, que habló es re importante para todas las cantantes que están allá afuera. Eh, yeah. es, hay que mantener algo que se llama, Santi, nobleza y humildad. Y no hay nada como preocuparse por tu trabajo, como dijo Lori, por, por cumplir tus sueños, pero no darle tanta importancia al figurar y figurar y toda esa película, sino al trabajo en sí. Y es lo que, lo que, el ejemplo que da Lori, ¿no? Lori es una cantante que es amada por todos. Aquí nos hemos dado cuenta, o sea, toda la gente estuvo súper conectada. O sea, a pesar del tiempo, siguen sus fans ahí fieles, sin necesidad que ella haga muchas entrevistas o salga por ahí. Es es su trabajo, es su canto, lo, lo que ella ya dejó, por eso está en este programa que se llama el Rockline Facebook Light Legends, porque las leyendas se crean es dejando una huella, no, no de otra manera, y la huella se, se deja es con el trabajo, con lo que hicieron, y Lori es atemporal, las canciones que ha cantado con Terry, las vamos a escuchar tus hijos, los hijos de, de tus hijos, etc. Saying that you're eternal, Lori. <ríe> sí, ok. Entonces... <ríe> Para mí, para mí es un placer eh, y un honor haberte tenido aquí en Rockline, Lori. De verdad que es como un sueño cumplido. Le doy gracias a Rosalía, que fue la que me ayudó por ahí. <ríe> y, y bueno, y bueno ya, ya la tendremos a ella por, por aquí también. Y qué bien que se viene el Leviatán. Yo quería hacerte una pregunta. ¿Este va a ser el, el, por ahora el único trabajo tuyo en solitario o podemos pensar en otro? Santi. Can we expect uh, another solo work for, from you? Or for now, just uh, Carmina Romanos? No, I think, I, I mean, I don't have anything in work right now, but everything's in here and I need to get it on down, recorded. So, yeah, there's so, there, this was a, it was a good opportunity for me to do that because it kind of opened the floodgates a bit. So I'm really hoping to do something. It may not sound a lot like <laughs> what you've heard in the past, so we'll see. We'll see what it's going to be. I'm not sure right Maybe now. Maybe jazz metal opera. <laughs> Coloratura jazz metal opera. Jazz yes. metal opera. Here we come. <laughs> Ok, uh, sí, Lori nos dice que, que probablemente sí vengan álbumes en solitario, eh, todo está en su cabeza, pero pues eh, vendrá, no sabe si es algo, algo que ya estamos acostumbrados a escuchar de ella o puede ser algo tan distinto como jazz opera de coloratura. <laughs> eh, Or what? Dance music? No, or, or dance. Salsa? Okay. okay. No. Or metal dance or dance opera. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Thank you, Larry. It was. Thank you. This was a really beautiful moment. Uh, you. Uh, I'm with. I'm with Hugo. I'm a huge fan of you. Uh, with Therian, of course. Um, And I, I don't know, this is a great moment for me. And I'm Thank so happy. Thank you all of you. Gracias por todo. Uh, <laughs> for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks to you. We, we had a lot of fans here uh, watching this interview. They're so yeah. happy. They're thanking you. Uh, you're my favorite singer, Lori. Lori, you have an amazing voice. I love you. Okay. A lot of, a lot of, of, of I love you too. A lot of messages okay. like your fan in Medellin that was a little bit obsessed. I think a lot of more here. Está ahí, está ahí el fan, no. I, I, I think maybe David is here and he, oh my God. he listening to oh, you. This is lower fun talking boy. Talking about him. No, we, may, we make a little fun, but really. <laughs> he was a wonderful dude. He really cared. He wanted to impress us. And it wasn't just me. I think he was in love with Therion. Okay, yeah, wow. we understand. All of Terry. <laughs> okay. All of Terry, but especially you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, Jen, gracias. Gracias por acompañarnos, Jen. Una, un, un... Gracias, Glory, your voice. Espectacular, mi admiración. Yeah. Dime. 
Tu pregunta que fue genial. La, 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 la. Ah, yes, obvio. Necesitaba saber una cantante lírica, por favor, como Lori. O sea, necesitaba te, eh, confirmar mis dudas. Y ahora yeah. es que tengo varias mi... cantantes que, sí, sí, que mi... del medio que me preguntaban eso. Si tienes la oportunidad, porque teníamos la duda sobre el registro de la voz, pero ya. Ok. Santi. Ok. Uh, sí, pues, uh, Lori, uh, Lori uh, Jen was talking about that uh, a lot of female singers in the scene here of Symphonic Metal wanted to ask you uh, the question that she made about your register and your, and your, oh, right now, yeah. and your, uh, I yeah, your type. Register, but it's, it's something stupid. I can sing really high. <laughs> <laughs> Ok, Santi, nos vamos a ir eh, para finalizar el programa con una, una canción de, de Carmina Romanus que Lori hace junto a un viejo amigo de ella que nos encanta, que es tremendo guitarrista, señor Christian Niemann. Y esa canción que se llama Venus. Ok, we're ending this interview with a last video of Carmina Romanus uh, with Christian New, uh, Newman um, with Venus. The planet of love. <laughs> okay, uh, see you. In, see you in the future, uh, Laurie. Thanks so much yes, for accepting you. this thank interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really so fun. glad. It was bye, so glad bye. Bye. with you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Solo tocamos éxitos en Rockline. As the sun rises in the west and sets on her in the east, she shines on us never at rest till the sun hides her burning retreat.
Somos, Somos tu conexión con el rock. Thanks a lot. Thanks.